So there is coming an issue of this whole service by publication in the legal world, all right? So I can go out and do what's called a suit to quiet title or an action to quiet title. And what this is, is it involves two halves of a title search. The first one is going to be looking for the public records, all of those recordings, and they will hire what's called a title abstractor. An abstractor is a very highly paid, trained professional that will go through and look at every legal action that has ever been taken on that property ever, 40 years or to the root. Okay, so they are not just looking at ownership. The abstractor is looking at everything. There was a zoning change. There was a fine assessed for health and hospital. There was a mortgage put on it. Oh, there's the release of the mortgage. That abstractor is a very strenuous job because they are, everybody is relying on you to get the right answer. While that is going on, there is an attorney that gets engaged who will be seeking the private lien. This is a lien that has not been recorded because recording has nothing to do with legality or it got recorded but hasn't made it to the public record yet. So what the attorney does is he posts in the newspaper, does anybody have the right to the property located at 12 Smith Street? please contact the attorney. And then he literally just stands there and waits. Nobody? Okay, nobody stepped up. So he will write a letter called the attorney's opinion to title, which is in the book, but it's like four pages over. I don't understand why it's way over there. It's on page 108. The attorney will write his opinion and he will say something to the effect, based upon my best legal opinion, this property is free from the hazards of litigation ensuing the title. So what you now have is you have the abstractor doing the public search of the record and you have the attorney doing the private call for private liens. You have to have both sections. You can't clap with one hand all right so when the title company gets this public search completed cameron was there a question oh it was gonna be quick but uh does title insurance is it like a one-time payment or is it like reoccurring as long as you have the house title insurance yes it's a one-time payment we will cover that here in a minute all right so you have both the legal or the both the private and the public search nothing was found in the public documents that is outstanding now he like I said he'll find a mortgage and he'll find a payoff so that means it's gone he'll find another mortgage and then a payoff he might find a weed lien and then where someone paid it so what he ended up with was a zero a net zero and the private, nobody stepped up to the attorney. So the attorney is going to write a letter to the title company called the attorney's opinion of title. And they're going to combine that with their public search. And they're going to say, okay, there does not seem to be any liens existing. So now, Raymond, we will allow you to make that statement and we will insure it. This is a hell of a business if you think about it. They are only going to sell you something when they know they can't lose because they've done all the searching prior to writing the policy. It's a great business model. Doesn't quite beat Goodwill's business model. You guys give him stuff, you give him his inventory and he sells it. That's quite a business model if you think about it. He's not buying inventory. We drive by, drop a sack of inventory off. He puts it on the shelf and sells it for a quarter. 
that's a great, great business model. I'm not bitter. Um, okay, so <clears throat> either way, now let's go to this scenario. Now Sears comes knocking at your door and says, we put a roof on the house. You come to me and you say, hey, quiet enjoyment, warranty forever, further assurance. My insurance company goes, no, Sears, you failed to step up when the attorney asked. You lost your right to that lien. Therefore, sorry, too bad. Because Sears should have stepped up when they asked for that private lien and they failed to do that. All right. Now, the other scenario could have been they step up and the attorney goes, well, you know, I didn't really quite do a quiet enjoyment. I didn't do it three times. I was gone on vacation. And the judge may say that the Sears's lien will stand and the title company will have to make a payment out of there because it was a policy that got written. But either way, I'm not paying it nor you because there was a policy written. Now they will probably sell the attorney sue the attorney because they based their yes upon his yes, and he wasn't quite honest in that last scenario. All right. So that's the whole title search and the abstract. What you're trying to get to is this thing called marketable title. What you want is a marketable title. Now, I'm going to read this section because of these three things are very important. There on page 107, a marketable title does not disclose serious defects or not depend on doubtful question of law or fact to prove its validity. So it's not requiring any legal standings. It can stand on its own. Does not expose the purchaser to the hazards of litigation or threaten the quiet enjoyment of the property and will convince a reasonably well-informed and prudent purchaser acting on the business principles and with the knowledge of the facts and their legal significance that the purchaser could sell or mortgage the property at a later time. That is a whole bunch of mumbo jumbo, but if you squint your eyes correctly and turn your head, what you see are five guarantees. You see the ownership, you see the possession, you see the quiet enjoyment, you see the further uh, assurance. So what I'm telling you is, if you can get the insurance for a general warranty deed, you in fact have a marketable title. This would allow you to sell the property at its highest protection and probably get the highest price or value for that property. Any questions on that? Nobody got a question. <clears throat> All right. Feels like we're flying through this. I want to make sure you guys understand. If you have a question at a later date, remember you can email me, Raymond, at realuniversity.com if you have further questions to make sure you understand. Now, <clears throat> if you want to prove that you have marketable title, the deed that we talked about is not the proof. The deed does not prove ownership. The deed, remember, boop, only showed there was a transfer of ownership. It doesn't prove you own it now. So the worst scenario for proving ownership is showing the deed. What you want to keep is the insurance policy because if a company is insuring you in making those statements, you can damn well bet that you are the owner of the property. Now, there is this thing called a certificate of title, but once again, it is more like a Polaroid picture. For you young people, there used to be a camera where you could take pictures and you would shake it till it dry and it would appear. 
Now we've got, you know, you guys know, heard of that? Ross, you ever heard of a Polaroid? Sweet. <clears throat> a certificate of title is much like that. You can show a picture and go, well, yeah, here I am, you know, 100 pounds lighter. Well, yeah, that was then. It was good then, but it's certainly not good now. Same thing. I can go get a certificate of title. It's going to have an effective date on it. Three years later, that effective date, once again, may be out of range. So someone's going to go, well, you owned it that day. Do you own it now? It's still not a perfect world. What you want to own or keep is the title insurance policy. This is really weird for those of us in Indiana because here to get car insurance, you have to prove you own the car to get car insurance. In this scenario, what I'm telling you, to prove you own it, you show the insurance. So it works kind of backward from what we're used to seeing. The best proof of ownership is the insurance policy. That's what you they want to take care of.